Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this was a, a really long video, so I cut this down into two. So in this video, I am going to be doing my baseline test at rugby, which is for my head, head test for, what are those called? Head knocks, um, if you're unconscious or anything like that. Yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. There you go. Heads, good morning. It is Tuesday morning. Um, it's about quarter to nine. I've been on the road for a good couple of hours. I'm driving back home from Joel's from London. Finn is fast asleep here. Um, I've just stopped for a coffee, got back in the car, got about an hour, I was waiting on, about an hour to go. And I just thought I'd jump on because from yesterday, I've just been feeling a little bit, there's a word, there's a word in the north called, it's sloughed. And it just means a bit, meh, bit, bit meh, bit, not quite sad, but not quite, yourself so I've been kind of trying to sit with that I, you know over the years I've done a lot of therapy I've done uh, meditation I've like read a lot of books I'm really as a coach you know I'm really big into pro being better making progress moving forward whether that's physically mentally emotionally they're, they're all linked and so being able to just kind of reflect and sit with what's going on and analyze it a little bit and I know exactly what it is. Number one, it's been out of routine. I'm a routine roots, right? It's a, I'm a big creature of habit. So that, that a little bit, but not so much. It's, and Joel actually pointed it out yesterday. It's about um, what you consume. So you are what you consume. Whether we're talking about food, whether we're talking about drink, but also the conversations that you have, the things that you watch, the things that you listen to. You know, if you are consuming crap on social media and TV all the time, it's gonna impact you. If you are looking at the news that's sad, I mean, some of the stuff that's going on in the world at the minute. And I think I put a tweet out uh, the other day because something that I always see and that's I've never been able to get my head around is that people who would consider themselves on the left and I would consider myself on the left um, I don't consider myself some kind of extremist. I would like to consider myself a left-leaning centralist in most things. Um, and I see things on Twitter, and I see the, the, you know, in the UK, the Conservative government's been in power for 12 years, and they made an absolute sham of the country. And the working-class people where I come from, a working-class background, is has been decimated. And I see all all these kind of people who've left been. You know, who are struggling in the cost of living crisis, who don't have the support that they need. You know, people in the LGBT community, people who are part of minorities who struggle, who are not given the support they need. And I see all the time on Twitter, on social media, that they're they're always infighting. And while it allows, while we do that, it allows the people who oppress those people to get away with it. So I, I, I saw him, there's the World Cup in Qatar, the Soccer World Cup, Football World Cup, whatever you want to call it, going on in Qatar at the minute. And yes, it shouldn't be there. And yes, it's corrupt while it's there. And it's horrendous what is going on in Qatar. LGBTQ people are, uh, are hunted by state-funded police to arrest them, to torture them. You know, it's, it's punishable by imprisonment. Things are turned a blind eye to. Human rights, how women are treated in the country, it's horrendous. And I see people, you know, having a go at people like David Becker, Gary Lineker, Gary Neville, who've gone out there for various different reasons, but essentially to promote the World Cup. And realistically, I, you know, we see those people in the public sphere and they shouldn't have done what they've done. They shouldn't have taken the money that they've taken. They shouldn't because by doing so they are they're not necessarily they're not guilty of doing what you know Qatar have done but they're not a, they're taking their money or, you know they, they go in there when really what they could be doing is they've got a big enough profile to boycott the boycott the tournament stay in the UK and draw attention to it that way they didn't need to go and take the money that said they are not the enemy they are not the people who are oppressing people. They are not the people who are coming up with policies that harm the LGBT community, that harm women's rights. You know, the, that's the Qatari government and it's our governments and, and other governments' jobs to hold countries like that to account. 
and I, I just put a tweet out talking about, I'll put the tweet in here. And then I get attacked by people on the right who say, oh, stop, they're just doing the job, sort off, blah, 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 blah. And also by people on the left who are going, no, you've got to be militant about everything. I, and also, I'm certainly not the enemy. And it, social media is amazing for so many things. It connects people that would never have been connected. It gives people a sense of community who often feel lonely. It gives people uh, something to us that's uh, aspirational. It, it can help educate people. It can upskill people. It can do all sorts of things. But what the big downside to what social media has done, and I mean Twitter is the wild west of social media, but most social media places are, what they've done is they have eliminated nuance and people seem to forget that the world is not black and white the world is not yes or no there are shades and peaks and troughs and everything is not yes or no and it would be easy it would be really easy for the world to be like that decisions would be easy but human beings are as Brené Brown said human beings are emotional beings that think sometimes, not thinking beings that are emotional sometimes. And I just think it's so easy to, you know, tweet things and, and consume things without really thinking about what's going on. And oh, I don't care, I'll never see that person. It doesn't, but there's another person at the end of, of that. You know, I see people who've been watching these YouTube videos and it's, you know, thousands of people. If you were to get thousands of people in a room, the human beings in a room that were watching me talking, popping on. And it just, I, I actually feel a lot better for just talking about it and venting on to you guys. But I think I, I have always tried to use any kind of platform or notoriety that I have got to champion equality, diversity, because I genuinely believe it makes the world better. Not because I feel that I have to, because I'm part of the LGBT community, not all. I genuinely think getting different perspectives, different lived experiences, different understandings of similar problems helps us all learn and be better and do more and understand each other and we can progress as individuals and as a society. I genuinely believe that and I champion it. And then when you do things like that and there are certain people, especially from people who I would say are in, you know, part of my community who say, oh, you know, you don't do enough or, or that you're you know bad for the community and things like that i think wow is is there any point in doing anything is there any point in making content is there any point in saying anything and sticking your head above the parapet but you have to stick your head above the parapet um and i'm just always reminded of that quote that evil succeeds when good men good people do nothing so you know, and, and when people talk about voting, they'll say, oh, what's the point of having it? What's the point of voting? My vote doesn't count for anything. Well, if everybody's got that attitude, then no, it doesn't. But if everybody has the opposite attitude, then yes, it does. And, and I suppose that is why I continue to generally stick my head above the parapet and sometimes say things I maybe shouldn't say. But yeah, I just, I realize I've gone on for a long time there, but I think that's, I think it's really important to, to address. So yeah, the world is full of nuance. Good people do bad things. Bad people do good things. Does one thing erase other things? There's, there's so many questions. I think the thing is, the takeaway is, be mindful of what you consume and keep doing what you believe is the right thing. Even in the face of people not agreeing with you because, you know, no one's always gonna agree with you. And the, the, the fact that, like the England football team and the Wales and the Welsh football team, the captains said they were going to wear this one love armband, um, and then when when they were threatened with a yellow card, they said, "Oh, we're not going to do it." So the rights of actual human beings, men, women, children who are being oppressed, are not worth a yellow card. <sighs> Is for me is a really sad state of affairs and people might say well they're sportsmen they're not um you know they're not supposed to get involved sport is political sport is political look at any sport there's always politics involved there's always you know people they're happy footballers are happy to take get a yellow card when they take the top off because they're promoting a 
something that's happened to someone or something that they are actually passionate about it just shows that they're not passionate about it and that's fine but don't talk the talk if you're not willing to walk the walk that's what I would say Here we are at training then. Here's the Brains Trust. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, well. um, Tom's gonna do, what test are we doing, Tom? We're doing a SCAT 5. SCAT 5, what's that for? It's a baseline um, assessment of your um, yeah. mental. Okay, so basically, Tom's gonna test where I'm at. Blake is. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's gonna test where I'm at, and then if I get knocked out, I have to redo this and get the same results. That's it, innit, Tommy, in a nutshell? Oh, that's about it, yeah. All right, have a look. Right, sit down for a minute, it's all the questions first. How old are you? I'm 34. And you're male? I am male, I think. Are you right or left handed? Right handed. Right handed. How many diagnoses confirmed have you got in the past? Uh, two. Two. Right handed? Yeah. Right handed. Right handed. Right handed. How many diagnoses concussions have you got in the past? None. Have you ever been hospitalised for any sort of head injury? No. Have you ever been diagnosed with migraines or treated for headaches? No. Have you ever been diagnosed with a learning disability or like dyslexia? No. Have you ever been diagnosed with ADHD? No. Have you been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, or any other mental health issues? No. Have you taken any medication regularly except your supplements? No. no. I'm just going to read your, read your list of symptoms, just tell me if you've got any of them now, okay? So headache? No. Pressure in your head? No. Any neck pain? No. Any nausea or vomiting? No. Dizziness? No. Any blurred vision? No. Any balance problems? No. <coughs> sensitivity to light? No. Sensitivity to noise? No. Feeling like slowed down? No. <laughs> feeling like you're in a fog? No. Not feeling right? No. Difficulty concentrating? No. Difficulty remembering? No. Fatigue or low energy? No. Any confusion? No. Drowsiness? No. More emotional than usual? No. More irritable than usual? No. More sad than usual? No. Are you nervous or feeling anxious at the moment? No. Any trouble falling asleep? No. Those things that I've just read out, do you get any of those symptoms after you exercise or during exercise? No. And do you ever get any of those symptoms when you're doing any sort of mental task? No. No. Do you feel 100% at the minute for you? Yeah. Yeah. So these are two of your orientation, so can you tell me what month it is? November. And what's the date today? 22nd. What day of the week? Tuesday. Correct. And what year is it? 2022. Okay. And can you tell me what time it is within an hour? Quarter past six. Okay, These are your words, so this is doing your, your immediate memory and your recall, all right? So I'm gonna read you 10 words, and I want you to repeat those words back to me in any order. Okay. I don't mind what order. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> so, baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron, elbow, apple, carpet, saddle. Baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron, saddle, carpet. I stop concentrating after that. Saddle, carpet. Did you say rocket? No. no. Giving up? It's not bad to be fair. No, yeah. Seven. So I'm going to read you the same set of words again. And again, you repeat them back to me. Baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron, elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble. Elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble, baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron. Ten. Um, Has anybody else got ten, Tom? They've not, actually. You're the first one tonight. Yeah. So now we do a third attempt. So same word, baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron, elbow, apple, carpet, saddle. Bubble. Elbow, apple, carpet, saddle, bubble, baby, monkey, perfume, yeah. sunset, iron. It's a high score, that. 27 out of 30. This is a similar thing, but with numbers. Okay. So I'm going to read you a set of numbers, starting with three numbers, and we're going to work our way up to six. Okay. You've got to repeat them back to me in reverse order. So if I said one, two, three. This is three, two, one. Exactly. First set, five, two, six. Six, two, five. Good. Four, one, five. Five one four. Good one seven nine five. Five nine seven one. Good. Threw me with an extra one there. Okay, there's another extra one on this. This is four again. Okay. Four nine six eight. Eight six nine four. Good. Moving up to five now. 
Four, eight, five, two, seven. Seven, two, uh, five, eight, four. Nice. Six, one, eight, four, three. Three, four, eight, one, six. Nice. So last set, this is a six digit number. So eight, three, one, nine, six, four. Four, six, nine, one, three, eight. Nice. Last one. Seven, two, four, eight, five, six. Six, five, eight. Oh yeah, I, I didn't get that. Uh, no, I can't remember the first three. It's all right. It's fine. Okay. So next one. Can you tell me the months of the year, but in reverse order? December, November, October, September, August, July, June, May, April, March, February, January. So this is moving on to more of your, your neurological screening now, so more of the physical tests. Can you read? No. Come here, mate. Step four, neurological screen, see the instruction sheet, page seven for details of test administration and scoring of the tests. Okay, that's good. So you take your neck, switch range of motion, full range of motion, every direction. Do you get any pain in your neck when you do that? No. Okay. Can you stand up? And I want you to keep your head and neck still, and side to side. So keep your head still, side to side. Good. And then up and down. And hold my finger up, I want you to touch my finger and touch your own nose and just keep repeating it. Good. Keep going. And then we start to move slightly. Good. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, all right. Tandem stance, so one foot forward, one foot back, and heel to toe, hands on your hips. Can you maintain that? Stood like an angry bull. <laughs> right, that's fine then. Are you left or right footed? Right, just. <laughs> right, just. Yeah. Okay, so your non dominant side would be your left foot. Yeah. Okay, so feet together, hands on your hips, and you're just going to hold that position. Good. Can you close your eyes and maintain that? Good, okay. Moving on, so single leg stance, so I want you to stand on your left foot, hands on your hips, maintain that position. Can you close your eyes and do that? <laughs> okay, good, all right. Right, okay, so tandem stance, so you're gonna put your left foot to the back, so heel to toe again. And just get your balance, hands on your hips, and you're gonna hold that. You were perfect last time. You're perfect this time. Close your eyes. It's mad that isn't it? But is that what I did? Hey, can you fail this? Um no, except this is your baseline. Yeah, yeah. So So I just made it really hard for myself if I get whacked in the head. Obviously the higher your baseline test, yeah the highest score you've got to get on a game yeah, yeah. to, to pass but ultimately the, the doc can overrule it on the day so yeah. if i want happy ali want happy or the doc want happy with the way he's presenting it don't matter if you pass this test we can still fail you right, okay. and say you're not right yeah, yeah, yeah so it's just about knowing your players really and making a, a clinical judgment so you don't end up doing what that iranian goalkeeper did <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> so those words that we um we went through earlier can you what? remember any of them Elbow, apple, uh, baby monkey perfume, sunset iron, carpet saddle. I don't know what they want. Is. I know, but I can't remember what it is. Elbow. Elbow. Nine out of ten. It's pretty good. Right, that's you done. <laughs> Home from training. I'm actually going to wrap this vlog up there because it's already been quite long. I've just done a bit of food prep. Um, which I didn't record. I'll do some food prep at the weekend and take you through it. I'm just gonna have some dinner, um, some tuna steaks, baked potato, vegetables, really basic. Got to get back on it. There you go, look, ding. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. Subscribe, like, do all the things, leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. Um, the kids are gonna be here tomorrow and at the weekend, so I'll get 
plenty of stuff in there for you and on Thursday I'm going to a Christmas fair with Joe so I'll get plenty of that in but again thank you for watching I really appreciate it and I hope you're enjoying it